What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Well, hello, everybody. It's so wonderful to be spending some time with you again. Thank you so much for being here with me. We have an interesting title for our show, and for some of you, it's going to be very self-explanatory. And for others, I don't know, maybe it'll be a little bit new. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, thank you for being here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And that's me. I'm your host for the next hour or so, Karen Leslie. And I have the wonderful privilege of showing up every Wednesday afternoon, my time, depending on where you are in the world. But here where I live in Ontario, Canada, it's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is shining, which we haven't had a lot of. And the day is just, just lovely. I love Wednesdays. I get so excited to show up and be here with you. And knowing that you're here listening live is, uh, it's such a gift. And then, of course, thank you to all of you that look for Cultivating Kindness with Karen on whether it's the Inspired Choices Network or other platforms so that you can catch up and listen to the replays. We've been live now every week since December 14th, 2022. And that's sounding like a really cool number. And I wonder, I wonder how many more weeks will go. I think it's a lot. And if you would like it to be a lot, uh, let me know. You know, like the shows, share the shows, send me emails, whatever you want. But let's connect somehow. All right, let's get into today's show. So it's all about feng shui your thoughts. You don't need to know anything about feng shui in order to gain some valuable information and insight from today's show. Uh, if you are a feng shui expert or practitioner, cut me a little slack. <laughs> Because I'm not, but I love feng shui. And I do apply basic principles of it in my home and in particular in my office. I, uh, I have my map, I lay it out, and I work with it on a regular basis. And I'm not going to get into all of those details. Um, I'm happy to share a little bit of what I know with people. And I can also direct you to people who this is their profession. This is what they do. So... Feng Shui is, has a couple of sort of ways of looking at it and definitions. One is it's the way of wind and water. I don't know. When I read that one, it's like, okay. It doesn't give me really a lot of explanation as to what it does, what its purpose is, and like what it, what's the benefit of it? I guess I, when I think about it, you know, wind and water, the way they flow, you know, the energies of them. I get that. Uh, you know, they both have the ability to go around things and to push through things. That's not maybe quite so much in the feng shui looking at things. Uh, they are strong. Their energies can be forceful and they can be gentle. They can have power and they can have calmness. And whatever the energy is that's around within wind and water, it, it has a way of making itself known to those that are nearby. We're going to see how all that fits in. Now, I did find another definition. I'm going to read it because I don't have it memorized. But it says, Improving every aspect of your life by enhancing your environment according to the principles of harmony and energy flow. So that one makes more sense to me. I don't know about you, but harmony and energy flow. And well, I'm an energy practitioner and energy healer, have been one for well over 25 years. So that makes sense to me. 
And well, who doesn't love some harmony? That just the word harmony to me has an element of being a little more tranquil, being a little more zen. Uh, it has that element too of balance that comes into it as well. So feng shui is working with your environment. It's working with the physical space that you are in. I'm going to be taking it today and applying some of the principles of it to the not so physical space of your thought process or your subconscious mind uh, and your conscious mind as well. We'll get into that too. So it's how would you like to be thinking that if we bring in some of the elements of feng shui could make it more harmonious for you and have a better flow for you? Ooh, that sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, that really does sound good. All right. One of the things that um, I guess one of the first principles I want to bring up with in this is from an energetic perspective and from a feng shui perspective, clutter, it's a big no-no. It really, really is. I think I put in the show notes something about we could have also have called the show All Clutter Must Go because it is, yeah, okay. The only word I'm hearing is it is harmful. And that is probably the most direct way to explain clutter. Energies hang out in clutter. So whether that's just um, a stack of books or papers beside you, uh, um, oh, gosh, I have joked so many times that I should be living in a home or an environment where there's no flat surfaces, none whatsoever, because it's like they're uh, a magnet, like they just attract papers and things and just like, so much stuff on a flat surface. So I thought, Everything had a slight curve, maybe flat in one area where I could put a lamp or I could put something, a coaster, you know, that'd be great. But then it didn't hold anything else. Now, if I actually had that, I'd probably be so frustrated and bring in other energies that also are not at all helpful. But this, the idea of clutter around us is, is, is really bad. It just is. The energies that it holds can be of really any type, but predominantly they are energies that cause chaos around you, that cause disruption, that, uh, I mean, they can be also just quite negative and show itself however that's going to be. The, the clutter, the energies in it become stagnant the, like the wind and the water, like it cannot flow through. There's not that ease of movement when we have all of this clutter around us. My husband, before we were moving, you know, this would have been six or seven months ago, oh, seven or eight months ago now, was cleaning off the top of um, the buffet that we had in our dining area. And he put things away, like he, he dusted it, he did everything to it. <laughs> and he said to me, like he turned and looked at me and said, wow, that feels really good. Like it feels really different standing here now. And I was like, uh, yeah, I've only been telling you this for how many years, you know, but he needed to experience it. And there is tremendous value in moving the clutter out yourself. Like if somebody else does it, like if you have somebody that comes in and cleans your home for you once a week or once a month, whatever it might be, you feel different when you walk into the house. I mean, the air can even smell a different. And so that is also an example of like cleaning out the stale energies and the clutter. But when you do it yourself and, and in an area that is like habitually cluttered, and you move that out and you put things away. Like you don't just take the pile 
and put it somewhere else because then you're just creating clutter in another area. It's actually sorting through what gets thrown away, what is worth keeping, where does the items you're keeping, where do they go? Make a place for them. Not just like a storage or a junk space, like and be intentional with what you are keeping. And it makes a massive difference. It really does. Same for our thoughts. When we have a ton of thoughts going around in our head, it very often creates clutter in our thinking. When you've got this idea of sort of calming down how you're thinking or reorganizing your thoughts for a particular project that you might be thinking about or planning a trip, whatever it might be. You can just take some thoughts and shove them to the side as people will say, you know, just put them on the back burner, deal with that later. Or you can actually recognize that some of the thoughts you can just let go of. They're not, they're not helpful right now. They're not at all helpful with what I'm looking at doing. And you can let them go. And you can have a similar effect to what my husband did when he cleaned off the top of the buffet. It may not be quite as simple. The theory is very simple. But some of the steps that we take to do so will be a little different. They will mirror each other. There's no question about that. But uh, we'll get into this as we carry on through the show today and give you steps on to how to do this and the benefits of doing this. This um, clearing out of our thoughts and being a little more feng shui with how we're thinking and what we're holding on to is a tremendous health benefit to us. Just like having your house clean, someone coming in and do that, there's health benefits there. There really are. There's physical benefits. Your environment's cleaner. So dirt and dust and germs, they're out. We don't need those anymore. They're gone. That's great. Your immune system is very thankful for that as well. And then there's the visual side of it. You know, things are put away. Everything is tidier. Um, there's perhaps a, a, a calmness or more of a serenity when you look around or you walk in and you... You sit in your favorite spot in your home and you just look around and it's like, ah, oh, this is so nice. I'm so grateful that I can have this help every week, every month and be in this space. There's, so there's the visual calmness that brings into a, a mental calmness quite often as well. And you cannot be worrying about, well, <laughs> worrying about maybe getting ready for someone to come in and clean. Often we do a lot of cleaning up and tidying before the person arrives because we don't maintain the clutter in between their visits. To maintain the clutter means you need to be looking at it, working with it all the time, like every day. You put something down, is that where you want it? Or do you need to put it away somewhere else? Do you have to start a file? You know, there's, um, what's the saying? And the writing, there's books on this too. Like, you know, you touch something once. So when you pick it up, you decide where you're putting it and it goes into the place that it's meant to stay. For me, it's a great theory. I follow it sometimes. I do not follow it all the time. Not at all, but it would be something that I could strive towards for sure. So to feng shui your thoughts, right? Getting sort of an idea of that, right? We're going to create more calmness in how we're thinking, letting go of thoughts that aren't working for us. And like having your physical space cleaned, it has the same benefits. It helps your immune system. You're decreasing the stress and all of the hormones and chemical reactions that are going on inside your body, that helps you to be healthier and stronger and to have more vitality within you. 
that equates to also how we think and to be more inspiring and creative and just the list goes on and on. So feng shui, your thoughts. I like that. That's going to be a new term I'm going to, I think, be using for myself as a way of reminding me, reminding myself that this is really important and I need to pay attention to this. We'll see how you feel about it by the end of the show. We're going to go for our first break now. Thank you for being here on the Inspired Choices Network, where we are every week. Now, of course, you can find my show on all the different platforms, literally around the world. Cultivating for Kindness is there. I was at a big summit on the weekend and mentioned the podcast to a few different people. And then people are like, oh, wow, you're actually on Spotify? I just found you on Audible. And they're going and they're listing all of these places. A couple of people went and found the TV version of my show as well. And I was it was a lot of fun. But what was cool was they were so surprised at how easy it is to find my show. And that is a result of working with the Inspired Choices Network. So if you want more information on that, I'm happy to chat with you. And then you can also, of course, get in touch with the network itself. So don't go away, everybody. We will be back just in a couple of minutes and we're going to carry on looking at, all right, what is feng shuiing your thoughts? And okay, there's a thought. I'm going to use cleaning out your fridge as an example of what we're going to be doing. Okay, don't go away. You are going to want to hear this. All right, thanks. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so feng shui your thoughts. Let's clean out your refrigerator. <laughs> I know, what a thing to say, right? I think that this is a task that many people actually do not wish to do. They don't enjoy it. It's looked at as being a lot of work. It can be physically quite uncomfortable to, I mean, you got to pull everything out. If you're going to really do this, right? You're pulling everything out, out of all of your shelves, the drawers in your fridge, on the door. So then you've got all of it all over your countertops, everywhere around you, then depending on what you want to be cleaning it with, you've got to get in there and rub and scrub, dry it all off, and then put everything back. Now, this is a big job. Most of you will agree with me that it's not necessarily a fun job to do. Yes, it can be physically uncomfortable, and we avoid it. Like, we just avoid doing it. 
we'll spot clean. Something spills. Oh, fine. You know, uh, some kind of liquid spills over or whatever. No problem. We will do that. But for me, like one of the areas that I'm really bad in is taking the crisper drawers right out and actually washing them and getting all the little bits of green, <laughs> like all the, all the um, things from the green veggies that just, I don't know, <laughs> they just land there all the time. And they're a nuisance from my perspective. This is how our mind holds on to things and has the same thought pattern that I just described. The idea of cleaning out the fridge feels like, ah, but you know, it's necessary. And when you do it, and this is from a feng shui sort of side note as well, when you clean your appliances, anything, your toaster, your coffee maker, um, if you've got a hairdryer that kind of collects lint and like just dust comes in the, the, the nozzle end and things, anything like that, your car, when you clean these, and you maintain them, they work better. And it's not just from a mechanical perspective, it's energetic as well. They actually work better. Their, their lifespan is expanded. They, it's like the appliance appreciates it and wants to do its best for you. So your fridge is gonna be happier. <laughs> as strange as that may sound, it's going to want to do its best to take care of your food. Your mind has the same perspective. It wants to take care of you. And it holds on to all kinds of things. It just seems to make more space for stuff to come in. Like it's astounding what the mind can hold. And the same can be in your fridge. Sometimes it's the fact that there's so much in it that you have to clean it out because you know that there's bits and pieces in the back there that they've expired. You know, sometimes you may look and think, mm, I'm just going to actually throw this container out. I'm not even going to open it for fear of what you're going to find inside or how it's going to smell. So we avoid it. Now the mind, the thoughts don't technically smell, but you can still be holding thoughts that have expired. They're past their date. They are, they are energetically growing mold or whatever that is that happens inside those containers. We avoid cleaning out the mind because same thing. It's a big job. It's going to take time. I've got to look at all of these different thoughts and thought patterns. I don't want to do that, Karen. I don't know which ones to let go of. It's easier in the fridge. It's got stuff growing on it. I know it's time for it to go. Or it's got the date. And I'm so past that date that, okay, I got to let that one go. Our thoughts don't come labeled this way to make it more helpful. And <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? I wonder if there's a way that we could figure that one out, right? But by doing this and looking at them, you can have the same results. As you got past the, I don't want to clean the fridge. This is just a job that's a nuisance. But you, you get there. You are now cleaning out your fridge. You found within you a reason to clean it out. Even if it was the fact that you needed to move seven or eight things out of the way to get to the container at the back that was causing the fridge to smell or that you knew was growing other stuff in it. But you found the reason to get to it. You moved the things out of the way that was stopping you from easily just picking it up and moving it. Look how this matches what we believe for our thoughts. <laughs> I've got a comment in the chat here. I love that. Energetically growing mold, right? <laughs> I know. I'm amazed at the words that come through sometimes. Mold is never healthy. It is actually toxic. 
it can cause you extreme health difficulties. And our thoughts can do the same thing. It's amazing. So you found that way to get into the fridge and to get that process going. And then hopefully you completed it. Now, maybe you only did half or you did a couple of shelves. Maybe you avoided those crisper drawers and you'll get to them next time. But the fact is that you have done some of it and then you see the results and it feels good. Like you feel really happy that you did it. And that feeling of seeing the results, feeling better about it, and that emotion that comes within you being so different than the emotion you had before you started, that is the point you can draw on for the inspiration or the nudge to go back and finish cleaning the fridge or to go back at another time and clean it again. Because it constantly needs cleaning. It, you know, as to how often, that's up to you, but it will need to be cleaned. Your thoughts as well need to be cleaned. You can choose to never do it and you'll have like a fridge that's never been cleaned that when you open it up, it is not going to be pleasant. If you never look at the thoughts you've got and decide which ones you want to clean out, then you get a cluttered mess. You get all of that chaos hanging out inside the mind, energetically in your body. Now, the, the clutter in your physical environment that holds stagnant energies that are not helpful, they truly are not. They're not ones you have to be afraid of, but they are not helpful. Exactly the same thing in your head, in your mind. You maintain these thoughts that are not helpful. They are actually stale thoughts. They don't serve a purpose anymore, but your mind's going to tell you that they do. Because like the fridge that likes to hide things in the back, your mind likes to hide things too. It just likes to hold on to it. Your mind's definition of harmony and the feeling you get when you actually have harmony when there's less clutter are very different. And really, the best thing for you to do is experience it. It really is. Experience it. Like my husband when it, in the first segment, experience cleaning off the top surface of something and seeing what it's like. More dramatically, clean the fridge and experience that. This whole idea of clearing out our thought process, yeah, it may feel overwhelming, but it will make you feel better. It will improve your immune system. Yeah, here's, okay, here's a, here's what I experienced earlier in the week. I was at an appointment with my dermatologist. Um, I've had, I mean, nothing serious, but I've had a couple of spots on my body that have had to be removed because they went into the um, beta cancer, cancer cells. And that was fine. And so I was just in for a checkup with it all. And everything's great. No problems. Did a full body check. All cool. I had a few spots I was unsure about. I was a little concerned about. So I was glad to go and, and have the doctor look at them. And then I get the go ahead. You're good. Like you're really good. I was not excited about that. Because I had bought into the idea that I had spots that were going into this carcinoma again. I mean, how silly slash stupid was I being in that moment? I had prepared myself that I was going to need a couple of other little surgeries. And then I don't. And I'm not like, well done body. Like, whoa, this is great. And then I had another thought. I asked, okay, so where's this coming from? Because I recognized what I was doing right away. 
And I asked, who am I being? I was being another family member who expects difficulties, had lots of physical difficulties, and was of the mindset that more were coming. I had that since a child. And I could see all of these times where I had sometimes physically created something in my body, you know, out of my thought patterns, and then how I was still carrying that thought pattern just last Monday, two days ago. And then it was like, you know what I say? Okay, stop. No, I am not. No, I am strong and healthy. And I changed my thought pattern. I cleaned out that stale and highly toxic, moldy thought energy I had. And that one was toxic. It could literally cause difficulties in my body. There are so many benefits to looking at things this way. Stepping into cleaning your thoughts is so powerful. And we're going to get into how to do that and the power with this when we come back from our break that we're going to go to just now. So again, thank you for being here with me. If you have questions, please send me an email, karen at karenlesley.ca. And Leslie is L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. So give some thought to what, a, what if your mind's your refrigerator, where's the mold growing? Where are those stale expired thoughts? And would you like to toss them out so they do not cause you trouble? All right. We'll get into this when we come back after this break, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll be with you shortly. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. How's your thought process going? Did you clean a few out? If you didn't, don't worry about it. We're going to get into how to do that. So I've got a great um, question here in the chat room. Now, how do I do this every day to have room for new unmoldy thoughts, <laughs> right? Which is great. Now, the thing is, there seems to be infinite space for thoughts to come in. There really does. Like I, I don't, I haven't read now. I'm, I haven't read everything that's published, of course, but you know, nowhere have I read that we, we tap out as to the number of thoughts that we can have. We have 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And that's just sort of what people have been able to calculate or estimate based on the, the research they're doing. It doesn't mean we can't have more. 
the number is massive. So now we need to look at, okay, let's increase the percentage of those thoughts that are not moldy, that are not expired. Let's look at creating that feng shui sense of harmony and flow that goes through them. Let's not harbor the ones that collect that chaotic and toxic energies. So what are those? Those are a lot of the thoughts from your childhood. They are a lot of the thoughts that people, of things people said to you when you were growing up that you've held on to, mostly because you've just heard them so often. You hear it enough and you believe it. And as you believe it, your mind, well, as I've said before, that reticular activating system in your brain actually goes out and seeks out evidence to prove to you that that thought is true. So the toxicity actually continues to grow, just like leaving something in your fridge for months or years. The, it gets worse and worse but we become accustomed to it being there. You know, I hear people say, um, sometimes to me, but I hear it with others as well, like, you're always so positive. Or how, how come, why is it that you always have a positive outlook on things? Well, there's a couple of answers to that. Um, one could be that the person is, is actually not being themselves, that may sound awful, but they could be in that people pleasing mode and they will be responding in a way that they think other people wish to hear. So they could be pretending, wearing that hat of, you know, positive, positive, and putting that energy and image forward. Then there's those that have made a choice in their life that they are going to look at things from a more positive perspective. And they've worked on letting go of being always a naysayer or seeing the difficulty in everything that comes forward. That can work well. That can also be a little fatiguing. The first one is definitely exhausting. And then you can be the person where Everything is meaningless. Now, meaningless doesn't mean you're flat, that you have no emotion. It actually gives you the ability to have the opposite. When you recognize that everything's meaningless and you give it the meaning and you get to choose the meaning, there is so much freedom. I mean, it's like going into that brain and just wiping out all of the crap because you're choosing to not buy into that anymore. You know, um, I've heard it said that Bob Proctor um, has said before, um, Bob Proctor's no longer alive with us anymore, but what he has said when someone would come to him and say, I've got good news and I've got bad news, which would you like? And his response would be, you have news, I will, decide whether to give it a positive or a negative, a good or a bad meaning. That's for me to decide, not you. And the first time I heard that quite a while ago, it really stuck with me. Because we say it all the time, oh, I've got good news, I've got bad news, which would you like? That person speaking has decided what's good and what's bad. And they've already come to a conclusion as to how they think you are going to feel about it as well. That will be in agreement with how they've judged the information. When you take that out of the equation and you know that you are the one, you're the only one that matters to decide if it's good news or bad news or just news, just data, just information. And holding on to that perspective when you're going to go in and clean out these thoughts and get sort of a more feng shui ease and flow with your thinking 
that can be a great asset to you. You know, okay, so I've said everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. Here's another one. What if everything you believe is not true? You can pull it forward. You can look at the expiry date. You can look at its toxicity level, its health level. And then you can decide, am I keeping this or am I letting this go? Or is there an aspect of this that works for me still, but the other parts I'm throwing away? I mean, who hasn't? I don't know. Maybe I'm sharing something I shouldn't. But who hasn't taken out a block of cheese from the fridge? And there's a little bit of either hardened cheese, like it gets really sharp and hard or even a bit of mold on it, and you cut it off, and then you can continue to eat the cheese. So you can look at it that way too. Is there parts of it that you wanna just take off and get rid of, and then still be able to work with other parts of that thought? So you don't have to throw it all out. That's not necessary all the time. It depends on the thought. And that's, that's you, that's your choice. What makes you feel good? You want the thoughts in your body, in your mind that that light you up, that makes you feel positive about you, that brings any emotion. It doesn't matter what the label is, brings any emotion in that feels good. When it doesn't feel good, there's your indication that the toxicity is starting or has already established itself. There's where you can start and look at that one and say, all right, like I did with that thought process I had in the doctor's office, you know, where is this from? Who am I being with this? And deciding whether you want to keep it or not. In my case, no, gone. I am not thinking that way anymore. How is that going to work for you? So slowing down how you think is really important hearing the words you say and for some people it works to actually be the observer of themselves and hear the words as if they're being spoken to you as if you were outside looking watching yourself speak or you've got a a, a special way of being there where you can hear the thoughts from being the observer of them. Now, technically speaking, an observer is somebody who's supposed to be non-biased, non-judgmental, and just looking at the facts. This, from a science perspective, this is how things are supposed to work. Now, what makes this a little more difficult is though, just by putting your intention on the thought, it's like you activate the thought. And so the previous emotions attached to it, they surface. Just knowing that is enough information for you to then sort of pause and go, oh yeah, okay. I remember Karen saying something like this. I can let that go. How do I really feel about this? How does this make me feel? To have your thoughts be in that space, like walking into your home just after you've had it cleaned. Could you imagine what that would be like to live in every day? No chaos, no fears, no judgments. Like, sure, maybe it's a pipe dream. Maybe it's not actually possible, but yes, yeah, so I've got here. Sounds pretty cool to me, right? Me too. I would love to be in that space. Am I there? Well, no, because Monday I just had that experience. And I've got 65 years of expired thoughts that are roaming around that are still there that I can work on getting rid of. There's, yeah, there's positivity and strength that comes from allowing yourself to tap into it. 
there really is like to know what thoughts you want to be keeping and which ones you wish to let go of means you need to know who you are. So all of those masks and all of those things we've talked about on other shows, like they need to come off. And finding that space and that bravery to go and look at you is critical. And it is an area that I can help you with and very successfully. But to reach that state of empowerment, to then look further, to let go of those thoughts that aren't healthy for you, means you need a clear understanding of who you wish to be and who you are currently being. And then that gap needs to become small to hopefully one day non-existent that you are actually who you are choosing to be in every moment of your day. That does sound cool. We're, <clears throat> we're going to look into that a little bit more when we come back. We are at our third break. Oh my gosh. So don't go away. This break's very short and I will do my best <laughs> to wrap all this up for you when we go get back. All right, everyone, just hang tight. We'll be back real soon. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Alrighty, everybody. This has been a really interesting show. It's taken some directions and some examples that uh, I wasn't really planning on. And I, I love that. I really do. So feng shui your thoughts. By now, I think you have an understanding a little bit of feng shui. You don't need to know a lot about it. But this whole idea of clutter is not a healthy space for any of us to be in, whether it's in our thoughts or whether it's in our environment around us. To change this really starts with you just deciding, okay, I'm doing this. And you may need to even say to yourself, I'm doing this for a period of time. Because you're going to have other thoughts come up that are going, it's not that bad. Or what do you mean? Or you felt really good yesterday. You're fine today. Now, problem with that one is that when we are with other people that are very positive, authentically, naturally positive in the in their thoughts and they let go of the toxicity of it. We, it's like walking into someone's home that's just been cleaned. It feels good. It feels good to be with them. But when you leave, then that energy shifts and you're back with just your own thoughts. So the fact that it felt good for a bit, that's really lovely because it actually gives you the experience of it. You can Remember what that was like, and that can be the motivation to carry on. This, this toxicity is, it can't be emphasized enough. These stale programs that are running inside us are keeping us where we are today. They are just, it's here. Everything we have done, everything we have achieved, it's all a result of the environment we are living in. To change anything means you need to change your thoughts, which will change your environment. So to clean off the top of the buffet or to clean the fridge first starts with the thought, oh, that needs to be cleaned. 
or whoa, what's that smell? Or, oh my gosh, there's so many papers on here. I mean, sometimes they can literally start sliding off of each other. I used to think it was a skill set that I could see the paper I needed because I could see what pile it was in. Sure, that was helpful. And it did help me find the information I was looking for. But it didn't change the energy around me. When I got rid of those piles of paper and threw some out, shredded some, and found spaces for the others, then my thinking became, became clearer, more precise, and much more helpful. You can do the same thing here. Make the choice that you wish to change the way you're thinking. Make the choice that I am going to pick one toxic thought pattern and I'm going to work on this to get rid of it. I am going to be diligent at scrubbing it clean and getting it out. And it may take some time and it may take a few layers and a few attempts. You know, if you've got something really stuck in the fridge and it's hard there, you know, sometimes I've had to get like a, a, a warm, like a hot cloth and take off a layer and then go clean the cloth and get hot water on it again and then go and clean it again. And it's multiple times until the surface is clean. It's the same idea. Now, next week's show is perfectly in line with this to give you further information on how to work with this. It's called Positive Thinking is Temporary. And I alluded to, to that just a couple of moments ago when I said, you know, you can be with somebody who's in that positive way of thinking and it feels good to be with them. And you, you start to be that way yourself, but then you leave the environment and it's gone. So next week, we're going to look more in more depth as to why positive thinking is actually just temporary and go into more tools as to how you can maintain it. This week, the purpose is to say, you've got these non-positive, these toxic, moldy thought patterns in with you. You can change them. So between now and next week, think about what you would like to change. Work at changing one of them. Work at scrubbing it out and saying, stop. That is not how I am going to think about this anymore. Stop. I am a different person today. And flip it around and start to build a new neural pathway so that the old one can crumble and leave. Just like scrubbing off layers, it starts to soften and crumble and leave. And next week, we are going to be specifically applying ways to be more positive in your thinking, the benefits of it, and how to maintain it so it's with you longer, so that that temporary, oh, bliss is the word that's coming in, that temporary bliss of that positive thinking for yourself, you can start to maintain it longer and longer. And that it's not a result of the energies from others. It becomes a result of the energy within you, you getting to know who you are, you making the choice as to what's good news, what's bad news. Letting go of all of that programming from other people who have told you this is bad, this is good, this is who you are. Stepping out of that cleaning house, so to speak. So that then you are in that space of harmony. You no longer have those stagnant energies with you, creating clutter and chaos, giving you a clearer image and view of you because that clarity is mandatory. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week.
Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.